The coolest part of my job is if I have some weird, crazy, out there idea, I have full encouragement from my boss to go and explore it and see if it makes sense to do. Welcome to the engineering lab. Why don't you come in and take a tour? My name is Jared Sobel. I started in Scrub Daddy in February of 2023 as a senior engineer. So over here, we have our more of our wet lab area, whether it's our sink, otherwise we testing out different products and we use a lot of different cleaning products and everything else here. Our work tables where any numerous number of projects might be worked on at one time. Our sewing machine, meat slicer for uh, slicing some foam, among other various tools and some foam stock we have as well. I should have engineered my suits. First of all, why is it so clean? Because they ask us. So that's not what our engineering department looks like. Engineering is usually disastrous, just the way like it means that like all kinds of stuff is happening, but it's really fun to come in and just like pick things apart. I'm a Philly native. I went to school at the University of Pennsylvania where I got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and my master's in robotics engineering. First time I heard about Scrub Daddy was when I was watching the Shark Tank episode in college. And from then on after, I only bought Scrub Daddy sponges to use even as a poor college student just because they worked that much better. I want to give you a little tour of the 3D printer room. Here you can first see that we have all of our filament and our filament storage for dry storage. And then you can see our three main 3D printers we use. We also have an Exo resin printer. And this is where we make all of our proof of concepts and prototype models. So you can feel that it's pretty warm in here. It's actually set to 80 degrees, which lets the printers print more consistently. Because if we had air conditioning or just had weird drafts in here, that that airflow itself can throw off our prints and cause defects. 3D print can take anywhere from an hour for a quick foam shape to 16, 24, 36 hour print sometimes. I take a lot of things home before they reach shelves or if they ever reach shelves. We found in testing that they weren't quite up to the Scrub Daddy standard. The Scrub Daddy standard is a high quality product that lasts a long time and gives you joy when you use it because cleaning is just not a joyful process for I'd say most people. And if there's anything we could do in our designs to make it a little bit more happy and more joyful while you're cleaning, we try to. Well, now that we showed you the 3D printer room, I'm gonna have my team member, Brian, show you how we could cut out one of our scrub daddies on our bandsaw. Hey, Brian, catch. Oh, thanks, Jared, but I think we'll start with something a little bit smaller. All right, guys, we're going to show you how we do some of our uh, sampling. So we have our die, and we're gonna cut out a piece of foam for that on our bandsaw. Safety first, always wear your glasses. All right, now that we have our blank cut out, and we're going to show you guys how we cut out some of our special shapes. I also had prepared some scour daddies and we're gonna head back to both those machines and show you how we do it. Place this down, put this over, and we're just gonna lower this head down. All right, pull this out and pretty much have our new shape. Our next machine, this is our uh, sonic welder, and uh, we're gonna make some samples of our scour daddy. We're gonna put in our ear protection first. Go for it. Ah! All right, guys, uh, now we're gonna go back to the lab and uh, finish this product. Just gonna take my vest off. We are going to quickly cut this down to size. Uh, this is where the tricky part might happen. Turn this on. And we are going to finish off the edge. Okay. And we have our finished sample. And we also, whoop, one more time. Okay, this is the, the real scour daddy. So just making uh, different iterations of it. One of the other methods we have for cutting our foam down is our meat slicer here. A little unconventional, but it makes really precise cuts, just like they do in the supermarket and load it in. Pull that guy out, and we got our slice. We're lucky in that one of Aaron's passions is engineering. He's super involved in the process whenever he's in the office. We just made a new design team. Another large influence is John, our new chief innovation officer. We absolutely take our prototypes and we show them 
both to John, to Aaron, as well as our product manager, Emmett, and see what their input is. So for some of our lower level or lower hanging fruit products, it's very quick. We give a week or two and people will come back with their thoughts and feelings. For a larger product that we're testing out, it might be a more extended amount of time, whether it's probably about two weeks to a month. Once we get all the feedback, it probably takes us anywhere from two to four weeks to make changes in the designs and then have them sent back out to our manufacturers. I'm gonna pass you off to Evan and I guess we'll let him inside. I'm Evan. I'm a mechanical engineer here. Let me show you guys some of the products we're working on right now. How does that sound? All right, first off, we have some of the quality assurance testing that we do in-house. Uh, we have a lot of quality set up at our manufacturing partners. That happens before it gets to us, but we still like to do spot checks. So some of the things that we're concerned about are obviously how the foam feels, um, but one of the biggest drivers of that is just how large the pores are. So in foam, there's lots of different pore sizes, as you can see here. This one's very fine, this one's very coarse. So that can tell us a lot right off the bat. So we just like to highlight that. We can do some counts and compare it to what we know it should be. And there's a lot of variations, so you can have some differences in colors. So we like to uh, spot check some of our colors as well. So we have this uh, spectro photometer here that we can just line up, take a measurement, and it'll tell us some, some specifications on what color we're working with. And we can compare that to our historical data as well. There's also always some weight variations, so we can take you know, just some weight data as well. Now let me show you guys a little bit about a new product we're working on and tell you a little bit about our design process. Here, these three samples, this middle one, it's actually 3D printed. So a lot of our products will start with some design work in a 3D modeling program like SolidWorks. And then this will come off those printers that we saw earlier. So we printed these. Then we actually put some Velcro on. Now this is a functional prototype. So we can use this, do some cleaning, do some testing before we commit to this, which would be a fully injection molded sample. And here we have the finished product and packaging now. I actually was fortunate enough over the last year or so to help design and build out our new engineering offices and laboratory space. We used to be in a very tiny little office that could really only fit three people, maybe four if you squeezed it, and a lab that was very small. And now we're in a humongous new lab and office that can fit a lot more people and a lot more equipment. And it's just all looking up from here. Now, if you guys wanna follow me, we can show you how we got to this 3D print. We start in our modeling software, SolidWorks here, and we can create all the geometry that we want out of this product. So you can see we have our Scrub Daddy logo, all these different components. And this is actually two different materials here. So we have a harder plastic and a softer plastic outside. And then when we send that to be molded, those will be two separate components. I can choose to make a 2D sketch of just about anything. Say if you wanted to make a Scrub Daddy, you'd start with a circle, you'd put in your hair, you'd put in your smiley face, and then you're gonna turn that into 3D geometry whatever you'd like. So I can start to make some 3D shapes out of my 2D sketches, and one thing leads to another, and you have your full product here. Obviously a little more complex than just extruding a circle, but that's how you get from a 2D drawing to a 3D shape. We have a lot more of a fun culture where a lot of people know a lot of people. I walk through our warehouse and I know everybody by name. I walk across the office to the other side and I'm talking to people who I might not work with on a daily basis, but I get to know them because we have a really nice, fun culture here where everybody's family, and I've really appreciated that. All right, that pretty much concludes our engineering tour. Uh, I've just got one more thing to show you. This one's a little top secret though, so actually I'm gonna have to ask you to get out of here. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> See ya. Scrub Danny.